tears run down my cheeks because the words always make me think of Ruth, whom I've lost for good. Ruth with the fine, heart-shaped mouth and the strong, clear eyes. My little lost friend with the sharp tongue and the loving heart. Our friendship is over, just as my childhood is. Now the last remnants fall away from me like flakes of a sun-scorched skin, and beneath looms an awkward and impossible adult. I read in my poetry album while the night wanders past the window, and, unawares, my childhood falls silently to the bottom of my memory, that library of the soul from which I draw knowledge and experience for the rest of my life. Hey everyone, and welcome to Travel Through Stories. My name is Sean, and today I want to talk about Toba Ditlevson's The Copenhagen Trilogy, translated by um, Tina Nanelli and Michael Favala Goldman. Um, the, the Copenhagen Trilogy was originally published in Denmark in the late 1960s and early 70s, um, but was recently republished in the US in this brand new edition. I should say up front that I've never actually read any of the fiction um, of Tova Ditlison. Um, I'm actually not sh quite sure how much of her works, uh, how many of her works are available in English, and my Danish is pretty bad, um, so I'll have to look into that. But I was drawn to this work, um, which is a sort of memoir of the childhood and young adulthood of the author, primarily because of other Nordic authors wh whom I've read. Um, who speak very highly of this novel and how influential it was. Um, I, I've been really into, in the past couple of years, the sort of auto-fiction that's coming out of, pr primarily out of Norway, um, the most famous of which in the past decade is obviously Karlova Knausgar's um, Mean Comp series. Um, but I've been really into um, Vigdis Hjorth's books, as well as um, Shirsti Skomskvald, or uh, Skomskvald uh, books, um, both of which, both of whom write amazing books that really blend together the boundaries between memoir, autobiography, and fiction. And actually, it was while I was researching Vigdis Hjorth that I came across a few interviews with her in which she spoke about how important Tova Ditlevsen's um, first novel, um, Childhood, was to her as a child as she spoke about how it was one of the only books that her mother actually owned and she read it over and over again throughout her childhood. This is all to say that I was really excited about this book um, even though I really knew nothing about the author and it didn't disappoint. Um, like the later Norwegian writers that I was just speaking about, uh, Ditlevsen has the ability to make the ordinary extraordinary um, and to make the mundane so compelling and emotional and interesting. So a very quick summary, um, and then I want to talk about a few moments that I really liked. Um, the trilogy is made up of three books, obviously, uh, Childhood, Youth, and Dependency. The first book is about her childhood, as the t title suggests, um, but it does a really good job of exploring the relationships between Ditlevsen and her parents, who are quite abusive emotionally and mentally. Youth is very much about Ditlevsen's search for a relationship. Um, her mother specifically um, seems only concerned with the with the young Tova uh, uh, with the young Tova finding a suitable husband, um, and this part really really begins the lifelong disparity between Tova Ditlison's um, desire to write poetry and her desire to essentially fit into the, the, the society that her parents really want her to fit into. And the last part, dependency, is a terrible and fascinating look into her early career, her marriages, and her addictions. Um, for me, this last part, um, this last book, was the most interesting and the most powerful, as her dependency on her children, on her husbands, on her publishers, and her medication are all incredibly frustrating. Um, but really compelling and really well written. That being said, I do want to talk about the first part, childhood, a bit. Um, as, and this may sound really weird, um, but I really usually don't like books that are about children or about childhood. For instance, I found the third uh, Knausgar book um, that is really about his, his young childhood um, to be his weakest. And I don't really think that has much to do with his writing in this book. Um, and, 
it has more to do with my inability to connect to or care to the young Karlova. Um, that is, I'm old, and I find the older Karlova um, to be much more reliable, uh, uh, to be much more relatable. With Ditlifson, though, she does such a great job exploring childhood that I couldn't help but sympathize with her inability to make meaningful relationships. At one point, she writes, Childhood is long and narrow, like a coffin, and you can't get out of it on your own. It's there all the time, and everyone, everyone can see it just as clearly as you can see pretty Ludwig's uh, hair lip. It's the same with him as, as with pretty Lily, who's so ugly, and you can't imagine she even has, she ever had a mother. Everything that is ugly or unfortunate is called beautiful, and no one knows why. You can't get out of childhood, and it clings to you like a bad smell. You notice it in other children. Each childhood has its own smell. You don't recognize your own, and, you're some, and sometimes you're afraid that it's worse than others. You're standing talking to another girl whose childhood smells of coal and ashes, and suddenly she takes a step back because she has noticed the terrible stink of your childhood. While I'm incredibly fortunate to have had a pretty good and privileged childhood, this description still resonates with me quite a bit. Um, the inability to recognize and escape the absurdity and awkwardness of childhood is really tangible here. Um, and this awkwardness and this inability to really connect with other people is exacerbated by her parents, who are so frustrating to read about in this first, in this first part. Um, but they're both such compelling characters because they're also controlled by um, the social system that they have no control over changing. Her father is a guy who keeps losing his jobs for various reasons and whose only personality trait is that he's a socialist um, and he's kind of the worst kind of socialist, one that um, eschews all art and beauty in favor of a weird sort of rugged utilitarianism. Her mother is also an interesting character. She's a housewife who doesn't really have a lot of hobbies and only seems to care about young Tova getting a job and marrying. Her parents are super working class and they don't really have the resources to expand out of these mindsets, these mindsets that were imposed upon them. We can only really imagine the sort of childhoods that they had. But this all affects Tova so much as she's torn between doing her childhood duty um, and following her parents' wishes, which a child really can't help but do, and writing poetry, which she's really drawn to. What I found so interesting about this first part was how her parents really created an anxious and paranoid environment where the only things that mattered were getting a job and marrying, and Tova's subsequent inability to maintain emotional connections with other people. In, in fact, her only real friend in this first part is a girl named Ruth, um, but it seems that friend may be too strong of a word. They sort of hang out and, and, and get on together well, uh, but there's no real reason for their relationship. They, they just kind of become randomly attached, and it's really unclear if, if Ruth um, really cares for Tova and vice versa. While I was surprised by how much I did like the first book, the next two are really where this book shines in a rather grim and honest way. Youth and Dependency both focus on Ditlifson's early career, her difficulties with entering the literary world and subsequent difficulties of staying and existing within that world that she worked so hard to get into. One thing that I found really interesting about these two parts is that they take place from probably around the year 1935 to like 1950 or so. I'm not exactly sure to be fair as it's not entirely clear how much time is, is going by. So in the backdrop of this real of this wonderfully intimate and honest portrayal of the young adult Ditlifsen is the rise of the Third Reich, the occupation of Denmark by the Nazis, and the Second World War all rage on in the background. What's interesting though, what I found interesting, is how little this really affects her. That is, all this stuff is mentioned. Um, at one point she's actually renting a room and her landlord is a devout Hitler follower. Um, which leads to some really interesting scenes um, and some interesting discussions about politics. Um, but it rarely comes to the forefront of this book, and I actually found this really refreshing, um, as it shows how a lot of normal people had to keep living normal lives during this period that I often think of as only, as only containing war and genocide and death. 
It does contain these things, obviously, um, but it also contains the life of this young woman, who is having trouble getting her poems published and is struggling to maintain a marriage. While reading the final book, Dependency, these geopolitics really fade away, and what we're left with is it what we're left with is a young mother who is struggling to exist. I don't want to spoil everything here, um, but this part is really hard to read um, as it explores as as the ways it explores addiction and abortions um, are both harrowing and heartbreaking. With that in mind, though, it also explores her rise to literary fame, which juxtaposes the poverty um, of her childhood. Though by this point, it seems that the damage has already been done, as fame and fortune are no cure for mental illnesses. The Copenhagen Trilogy really is a must-read, um, as it forces you to confront these these persistent issues and the subsequent repercussions of sexism, classism, poverty, addiction, problems regarding motherhood, um, etc. All from the perspective of a literary master. This book isn't overly ador uh, adorned or anything like that, um, though at times the prose is beautiful, um, but it gets at these issues in such an honest and direct way that you can't help but understand. Knowing how Ditlifson's life ends makes this trilogy all the more disturbing, but all the more powerful. Let me know what you think about the Copenhagen trilogy, and let me know if you've read any of her other works. I'm really interested to see what her poetry and her fiction is like, as I really admired her ability to describe the most ordinary things in such a clear um, and beautiful way. Thanks for watching.